you're having difficulty getting it up, worry that there is something physically wrong with your parts, or maybe it is psychological and all in your head. So which is it? Is your sexual incompetence physiological or psychological? Hold up, friend. In order to answer this loaded question, we need to understand your sexual predicament. Erectile dysfunction is the medical jargon used to explain the inability to get or keep an erection for sexual function. By this definition, those who suffer from erectile dysfunctions may never be able to get an erection. They can get an erection, but it's short-lived. They can get an erection, but it could be unpredictable or even flaky. Regardless of which camp you're in, you need not fret too much. It is one of the most common sexual problems for men and tends to become more common as men age. Before we move on to answering our question, let's familiarize ourselves with how erections work. So the unerect penis that is not sexually aroused is soft, limp, and slack. When you become sexually aroused, there are nerve messages that are released from the brain to prompt the body to increase blood flow to the penis. The penis is equipped with two erection chambers called the corpus cavernosums. The chambers are filled with erectile tissues called corporal sinusoids, which are made of mostly muscle. The muscle relaxes, the erectile bodies fill with blood, and voila, an erection occurs. So, why is this natural, pleasurable part of life messing up for you? Is it a mental thing or is it a physical complication? It turns out, my friend, that getting an erection is a pretty complex process that involves psychological impulses and the proper functioning of the nervous system and body. The mind and the body need to be in harmony for sexual activity to occur. Let's look at some psychological causes. I wish I could give you a concrete psychological cause, but to be very honest, it's a huge range of things. If your erectile dysfunction is a matter of mental state, it could be that you are suffering from depression, performance anxiety, fatigue, stress, or you might just not be into that particular place, the time, or it may even be your partner. Anxiety seems to play a central role in the literature, as there's actually evidence to suggest that anxiety and erectile dysfunction are related. But hey, this doesn't imply causality. What do I mean by that? Well, just because you have anxiety, it doesn't mean you will automatically suffer from erectile dysfunction, and vice versa. To understand the physiological causes that may be causing your sexual penile pickle, there is one basic idea that you have to wrap your mind around. Any condition that blocks the erectile arteries, the tubes in the body that deliver blood, or cause scarring to that spongy erectile tissue we just talked about, or prevents proper blood flow, is going to limit the erection. Because in its most simplest form, an erection is just the hardening and lifting of the penis due to an increased blood flow to the penis's erectile chambers. Let's take diabetes, for instance. Diabetic patients often have trouble dilating their blood vessels, which means to become bigger. That actually impairs the blood flow. So impaired blood flow, increased chance of erectile dysfunction. Take atherosclerosis, the disease in which plaques build up inside the arteries. This also hinders proper blood flow and increases the risk of erectile dysfunction. Hypertension is an interesting condition that requires, well, a leap of logic. You would think that those who have high blood pressure, hypertension, would have no problem with erectile functioning. However, in the US, about 40% of those who had erectile dysfunction also had hypertension. Why? Well, high blood pressure keeps the arteries that carry blood from the penis from dilating. Bet you didn't see that plot twist. Even drugs and medication can affect the physiological aspect of getting it up. Some medications have side effects that influence sexual desire, arousal, or blood flow. The literature cautions us not to view erectile dysfunction as a side effect of medication as much of this evidence is actually just self-reported and questionnaire based. It may not be the medication that you're taking for diabetes that's causing erectile dysfunction. It just may be the fact that you're suffering from a disease that affects the dilation of your blood vessels. What is the conclusion, my friend? Turns out, the answer to that, it's a mix of both. The mind and the body need to be optimally functioning. 
there are numerous interrelated factors that contribute to erectile dysfunction. So my friend, the failure to have or keep an erection for sexual activity isn't black or white, mental or physical. It can be a combination of both. Talk to your physician to further understand the cause of your erectile dysfunction. For now, onwards, and well, hopefully, upwards.